But Ian, aren't there already 40k lore videos about the Bad App War, where someone drones on for three hours over a moving slideshow? You're not gonna make one of those, are you? The Bad Ab War is a recurring story in Warhammer 40k, an internal dispute that spirals into a localised civil war, and I really like how mundane it is. Rather than the usual fall to chaos, it's a story about the inefficiency of the Imperium. I have another video where I go through the various mentions of Badab over the years and how it's evolved, but in this video I just wanted to go through the story from start to end, hopefully in about 20 minutes. I'm going to break it down year by year, and I'm going to accompany it with a moving map, so hopefully it's easier to follow. So, here we go. Like everything in 40k, the seeds of the Bad Ab War are sown hundreds of years before, with the formation of the Maelstrom Warders. The Maelstrom was a massive and ancient stellar warp vortex close to the galactic core, an area where the warp and real space cross over, and the worlds within it were a haven for pirates, Xenos, and the forces of chaos. The area around the Maelstrom, called the Maelstrom Zone, contained a huge amount of mineral wealth, so settlements had persisted close by, but attacks from within the Maelstrom were always an issue, and after the successful invasion and destruction of the hive world of Signax by a force of Chaos Space Marines, a decision was taken to station several Space Marine chapters in the zone. Founded in year 587 of the 41st millennium, these Maelstrom Warders chapters would consist of the Mantis Warriors, whose home world was already within the zone in the Endymion Cluster, the fleet-based Lamenters and Charnel Guard chapters, and would be led by the renowned Astral Claws, who took over an orbital station in the Bad Ab system. They'd be aided by a permanently stationed Imperial Navy squadron. In the century or so immediately following their formation, this was a great success, but after the Charnel Guard were retasked elsewhere, and a number of attacks made it out of the Maelstrom in the following years, the Astral Claws and Lamenters were heavily criticised by the Inquisition. This infuriated the chapters, who had been petitioning for a replacement to the Charnel Guard for years at this point. A second, but less well-known seed would be planted when the Tiger Claws chapter reappeared a hundred years later, in 680, after being thought lost in the warp. The Tiger Claws were a successor of the Astral Claws, but on their return only a handful survived. But in 40k, chapters are required to send a portion of their gene seed back to terror every so often, for purity checks and as a sort of reserve. The Tiger Claws chapter master, Velata, went to terror to request the release of the gene seed to rebuild the chapter, and mysteriously disappeared. The remaining Tiger Claws sought refuge with the Astral Claws, and were quietly reabsorbed into their parent chapter. Finally, in 715, Lufthuron, captain of the Astral Claws' third company, was appointed chapter master, and he embarked on a campaign to strengthen the water chapters and the defences of the Maelstrom Zone. He expanded the Badab fleet with captured Corsair ships, increased their stockpile of armaments, and, after a brief civil war occurred over succession on Badab Primaris, took direct control of Badab, executing the ruling nobility and claiming the Badab sector as the Astral Claws chapter fiefdom, to better protect these worlds and those souls who dwell upon them in the glory of the Emperor. He also sent petitions to Terra to request additional forces so that the Maelstrom could be subdued forever. His petitions were dismissed without full hearing. In protest, Huron withheld Badab's planetary tithe and blocked trade routes through the Maelstrom Zone, citing the need for additional raw materials to defend the area and additional security. This caused a rift with the nearby Carthago sector, whose administratum relied on those tithes. And this turns into what in essence is a legal dispute known as the Badab Schism, between the clashing entitlement of the administratum to the Imperial tithe, and the ancient rights of Astartes commanders to defend the Imperium by any means necessary. It's also around this time that the Astral Claw's own gene seed submissions to Terra become infrequent. No reason is stated, but various reports suggest that this this was either to build up the Astral Claws' own forces, or to rebuild those of the Tiger Claws. 
Anyway, while this legal battle smoulders in the background, the Astral Claws go on the offensive. They come to the aid of nearby worlds, they tip the tide and win the nearby Fourth Quadrant Rebellion, and eventually they combine with a Black Templar's Crusader fleet to push further into the Maelstrom than any Imperial force had ever gone. However, midway through this push, the Black Templars are retasked to the Ultramar Sector, and stripped of resources by the Imperium yet again, the Warder chapters are forced to withdraw. By 901, the ongoing legal disputes seem to be leaning in favour of the Carthan Administratum, and so, jumping on this, they dispatch an assayance fleet to Bad Ab to demand the missing tithe, the gene seed submission, and any commandeered resources, like Corsair ships. As you can imagine, this isn't received well. The hugely powerful system defences of Bad Ab demand the tithe fleet give way to the just authority of the system's masters. The Tithe fleet demand the defences stand down in the name of the Emperor, and after a moment of panic, the Badab system defences awake and the fleet is destroyed. This causes huge local political fallout. The governor of the Carthago sector calls for censure against the Astral Claws and the arrest of Huron, but the Imperium at large ignores this. The Badab sector is regarded as a vital bulwark against the Maelstrom. The Carthans, increasingly desperate, take matters into their own hands. Two more fleets are sent into the Maelstrom zone, both disappear, and the Carthan Imperial commanders begin to spread propaganda that the Astral Claws and Huron himself are traitors. Incensed by this, in 903, Lufthuron issues the famous Articles of Just Secession, ratified by the Mantis Warriors and the Lamenters, which state that the whole Maelstrom Zone will sever its ties from its neighbouring sectors to better protect the Imperium at large. The Carthans threaten war. They try to seek aid from the Departmento Minotaurum and Navy, but are flatly refused and inform that the matter was an internal disagreement. They increase their PDF forces and convince their counterparts on the Maelstrom Zone Administratum base of Sagan to do the same. And finally, they send direct and open appeals to several Space Marine chapters to aid them in recovering the lost tithe and safeguarding their ships. The first to respond in 904 were the Firehawks. The Firehawks agree to investigate the lost shipping and send several ships into the Maelstrom Zone. When the Firehawks ship Red Harbinger enters the Endymion Cluster, it's intercepted by the Mantis Warriors, who order it to stand down. The Firehawks refuse, and the Mantis Warriors open fire and cripple the ship before boarding and capturing the Marines on board. While the Marines themselves are eventually returned in a tense standoff with the Firehawks battle group, the master of the Firehawks chapter, Stebord Lazarak, is furious and retasks the entire chapter fleet to the zone. Basing themselves at Sagan along with the Carthan fleet, they start to send probing attacks into the zone. When these fail, they try to draw out the Mantis warriors by sending the bulk of their chapter to attack Iblis in the Endymion cluster. However, this was anticipated by the secessionists, and while the Mantis warriors pinned down the Firehawks on Iblis, the Lamenters and Astral Claws attacked and overwhelmed the Administratum Fortress world of Sagan, taking over the Tithe Fortress's vast stockpile of arms, munitions, and supplies. After this, the conflict became a running battle as the badly outnumbered Firehawks fell back until the arrival of the Marines Errant chapter, who were responding to the Firehawks' request for aid. The Marines Errant swiftly moved to secure shipping lanes, ignoring the Firehawks' calls for direct assault and avoiding open conflict, particularly with the Lamenters who they recently fought alongside. Both chapters give quarter to each other numerous times, which annoys their allies. In late 904, word reaches the Loyalists that the Executioner's chapter, who owe the Astral Claw an ancient blood debt, had dispatched a strike force to the Maelstrom Zone to aid in its defence. In desperation, and with the Carthan Imperial commanders almost bankrupted by the dispute so far, the Carth Administratum attempt once again to harvest some of the tithed resources. They assembled a convoy of fleet and marines errant ships around the colossal freighter Cardinal Erdenetta, with the aim of punching through to the tithe depots on Viania. But Lufthuron and the Astral Claws were aware of the plan and ambushed the convoy after it had collected the tithes, taking 23 vessels as captive prizes. This effectively knocked the Carthans out of the war, and follow-up attacks by the Astral Claws against the Firehawks in the Golgotham Wastes, and by the Mantis Warriors against the Marines Errant on Bellerophon's Fall, decimated the Loyalist chapters and forced their retreat. By the end of 904, this border war was over, and the Maelstrom Zone and its tithes remained firmly in control of the Maelstrom Warders. 
However, with five chapters now in open conflict, the Imperium's high authorities finally decided to take action. They dispatched a delegation of Imperial Legate Inquisitors, led by Inquisitor Jan Dice Frain, to investigate. After finding evidence of the lack of gene seed submissions and the attacks against Imperial shipping, the delegation demanded the unconditional ceasefire of all parties and for the warders to surrender. This was immediately rejected by Huron, who stated that standing down would leave the Maelstrom zone defenceless and his emperor given charges naked before the enemy. From a legal dispute to a local feud, the Badab War had now become a conflict between the Imperium and all who stood with Lufthuron. After the judgment of the legates was delivered, a force of Space Marine chapters was assembled from those in the area, consisting of elements from the Salamanders, Raptors and Fire Angels, and led by the Red Scorpions. The Firehawks and Marines Erin are stood down from frontline duties, but before they retire, the Firehawks return to the Endymion Cluster and firebomb the Mantis Warriors Protectorate of Sacristan, wiping out more than 90% of the population in revenge for their loss at Iblis. <laughs> The new Loyalist forces gathered at Josiah Quintus and started to push into the Maelstrom Zone, along with fleet elements from Battlefleet Solar. This led to the first big naval battle, the Battle of Silent Reach, between the Red Scorpions and Lamentus fleets. Though no big gains are achieved, the Secessionists are effectively contained by the fleets, and the Loyalists turn their attention towards Viania. The Firehawks and Raptors are moved into patrol and escort operations, while the Red Scorpions, Marines Errant, and Fire Angels conduct raids on the Viania system, where they encounter the Tyrant's Legion for the first time. The Tyrant's Legion are the reformed PDF forces of the Maelstrom Zone, commanded by elements of the Astral Claws, and they effectively hold against the raids. At the same time, advanced elements of the Executioner's chapter arrive and start to disrupt Loyalist supply lines, while forces loyal to Huron take over the independent fortress world of Surngrad from within. At this point, the Secessionists called a parley an abandoned asteroid base in the Grief system in order to avoid further bloodshed between those who should be brothers. Attended by the Tyrant of Badab, Luft Huron, Red Scorpion's Lord High Commander Ortis, and the Mantis Warriors Chapter Master Sartak, the discussions quickly broke down into accusations and calls for trial. But as the two sides adjourned, three unknown vessels broke from concealment in a nearby gas giant and attacked the base destroying it and killing Ortis and Sartak. This became known as the Betrayal at Grief, and all sides blamed the other. The Loyalists said it was a plot by Huron, while the Secessionists laid blame squarely at the door of the Inquisition, claiming it as an assassination attempt. After the loss of Ortis, the Loyalist commander, Secessionist raids increased until the appointment of Carab Cullen as the new Lord Commander of the Red Scorpions, which coincided with the arrival of forces from the Howling Griffins, Nova Marines and Sons of Medusa. At this point, the Marines errant were again moved into reserve before withdrawing entirely. Towards the end of 906, the Loyalists capitalise on gains in the Maelstrom Zone with the construction of Vengeance Station on Hallows Point, protected by the Firehawks fleet against Lamenta's raids, and the first attacks on secessionist shipping by the Red Scorpions and Raptors. The Nova Marines and Sons of Medusa probed into the Endymion Cluster, resulting in the garrisoning of the Chimara system by the Howling Griffins. This allowed the Loyalists to push forward into the Gargan Thea system, where the Raptors, Salamanders and Fire Angels fought the Astral Claws and Mantis warriors amongst the tangled vegetation. Capitalising on the Loyalist gains, the Raptors and Salamanders moved to retake Cerngrad via a series of covert operations led by the Raptors, and the planet was quickly rebuilt and garrisoned by the Salamanders. At the start of 907, the bulk of the Executioner's chapter arrived in the zone and immediately conducted a series of raids against the Howling Griffins at Chimara, destroying much of the system defences, but stopping short of annihilating the Loyalists. However, these secessionist gains didn't last long. In mid-907, an Orc War from the Kalar system disrupted secessionist plans, pushing in as far as Endymion itself and forcing the Mantis warriors to pull back and counter-invade. The Astral Claws also had to pull back from the front line to combat Corsair cults on Magog. At the same time, the Minotaurs entered the conflict, immediately launching a full-scale attack on Cairo, wiping out Tyrant's Legion forces there, and then marauding through the Pale Stars and Dean Stellar Drift, following their own list of targets. While a huge boon to the Loyalist forces, they only ever reported back to the Imperial Legates, and largely conducted their own war in the Southern Zone, coming into conflict with the Executioners, who had stationed themselves temporarily in the Dean Stellar Drift. 
Secessionist losses continued at Galen, where the Salamanders and Fire Angels dislodged a force of Astral Claws, and at Viania, where continued raids by the Red Scorpions and a relief force of Minotaurs finally wiped out the Tyrant's Legion defenders. In early 908, the Secessionists attempted to turn the tide by recovering buried weapon stores on the dead hive world of Signax. That's the world that was destroyed hundreds of years ago and started the whole story. But the Loyalists, dispatching the Sons of Medusa and the newly arrived Exorcist, commenced a brutal campaign to scour out the Astral Claws. However, the fractious Sons of Medusa pursued their own ends throughout the war, and the Exorcists were recalled and their forces added to what became the largest Loyalist push of the campaign, the retaking of Sagan. The mass strength of the Fire Angels, Red Scorpions and Exorcists, supported by the Nova Marines, Raptors and Salamanders, Fought through a maze of storage compounds as the Astral Claws launched last-ditch defences using suicide attacks and viral weapons. However, the Loyalists won, and Sagan became their primary base in the Maelstrom Zone. At this point, judging the secessionists to be contained, the Raptors, Nova Marines and Howling Griffins were withdrawn and redeployed. Officially, this was because of an orc war in the Ultima Segmentum, but unofficially, it was because all three chapters were considered too nice to push on and destroy the secessionists. Instead, outsider chapters like the Sons of Medusa and Exorcists were reinforced. By mid-908, the Loyalists, noticing that the bulk of the Lamentus chapter was being used to guard the southern flank of the Badab Sector against the Pale Stars, started to gather the Minotaurs chapter in strength nearby. They captured the Lamentus gene seed storage vessel, the Mata Lacrimarum, and used it as bait, drawing in the rest of the Lamentus forces and destroying them. Only 311 Lamentus survived, interned in a prison halt for the rest of the war. The Loyalists secured another victory at Angstrom. The Forge World of Angstrom had stayed independent for the duration of the war, insisting on delivering its tithe of material to imperial representatives every three years, regardless of if those representatives were loyalist or secessionist, until now they'd been secessionist. In late 908, an infiltrating Red Scorpions and Salamander's force attacked the handover of the equipment on Angstrom 8, causing as much damage as possible and scoring a major strategic victory. However, the outbreak of hostilities within their system angered the Mechanicus, who launched retaliatory raids on Galen and Iblis, and Cullen was forced to dispatch the reserved Fire Angels forces to blockade the Angstrom system for the rest of the war. By the end of 909, the Secessionists only held out in the Endymion Cluster and the Bad Ab Sector itself. In the Endymion Cluster, the Mantis Warriors were conducting a hit-and-run campaign against the Fire Angels and Sons of Medusa, while the bulk of the Astral Claws forces and fleet elements were within the Bad Ab Sector itself. The Executioner's base of operations in the Dean Stellar Drift was intact, but the Executioners themselves refused to operate under the direct control of the Tyrant of Bad Ab, operating only as allies to disrupt Loyalist activity. Galen had seen a lot of fighting and had switched sides multiple times during the campaign, and at the start of 910, Carab Cullen redirected the bulk of the Sons of Medusa, along with inquisitorial oversight, to make sure that could never happen again. The Sons of Medusa conducted a terror campaign, landing in the capital and massacring the populace. The rest of the settlements on the planet started to surrender within 56 hours, and Galen was left in inquisitorial prison world. Around the same time, the first advanced ships arrived from the Carcharodon Astra at the head of a full fleet advancing beyond the Golgotham Wastes. They were deployed directly to the Endymion Cluster in the hope of countering the guerrilla activities of the Mantis Warriors, and this tranquility campaign fell first on the Sigard system, where the Carcharodons destroyed its colonies and plundered resources and war material, before moving on to Iblis and then Endymion Prime itself. Ignoring the Fire Angels still holding out on the planet, the Carcharodons commenced a colossal drop pod assault, turning the entire planet into a battlefield. The Mantis warriors refused to retreat from Endymion Prime and were brought to battle again and again by the Kakarodons, each time returning with fewer marines. By the end of 910, the Mantis warriors had ceased to exist as an effective fighting force, and the Fire Angels, angered by the conduct of the Kakarodons, were withdrawn from the campaign. The Kalkaradons split their fleet to reinforce the Minotaurs and Red Scorpions in expectation of the invasion of the Bad Ab Sector. As the Tranquility Campaign came to a close in 911, the Minotaurs and Sons of Medusa, backed by penal regiments newly raised from Galen, had moved to assault Izin on the southern edge of the Badab Sector, while the Red Scorpions and Exorcists marshalled forces at Sagan. After intercepting secessionist communications, a combined force of Salamanders and Minotaurs were dispatched to Shaprias in the Lamptan system on the edge of the Maelstrom, where they discovered vast Astral Claws training camps. 
After assaulting the camps, fighting through hordes of savages and mutants, and descending into the catacombs below, they encountered the first Astral Claw's corpse taker apothecaries, and huge stores of gene seed recovered from the bodies of loyalists and secessionists alike. However, as they returned with the news from Lamptan, the Salamander's ship Pyre of Glory was caught in a warp squall and becalmed on the edge of the Maelstrom Zone. Its requests for aid were intercepted by a small secessionist ship carrying the Astral Claw's arch-centurion Karnak Commodus, who in turn requested aid in taking it on. When the Executioner's flagship, Phaeton's Wrath, answered, both ships fell on the Salamanders, leaving them crippled and accepting their surrender. However, as the executioners and salamanders gathered to formalise the surrender, Commodus led a boarding assault into the Pyre of Glory in an attempt to access and steal the salamander's gene seed. Furious at the dishonour, the executioners turned on their allies and slaughtered the Astral Claws before withdrawing back to their base in the Deanstellar Drift. With the Lamentors, the Mantis Warriors and the executioners now removed from the conflict, the Astral Claws were truly alone and Lufthuron became more and more erratic. Symbols of the Imperium were destroyed and the Badab Sector truly turned renegade. At the end of 9-11, the invasion of the Badab Sector started. Cullen had already set up secondary fronts at Isin and Disabolus, with Red Scorpions, Exorcists and Minotaur's forces conducting raids into the Sector, but the first major assault was on the Piraeus system. On the second moon of Critias, Carab Cullen and Lufthuron met in personal conflict, both wounding each other, and the Loyalist forces are trapped on the surface before the Imperial Navy managed to turn the tide and defeat the Secessionist fleet, attempting a daring extraction. In the aftermath, both forces claim victory. For the Secessionists, Piraeus was defended, but at the cost of their fleet. For the Loyalists, they destroyed a huge proportion of the Secessionist forces, and with the space lanes open, they were now in position to press the attack. At the start of 912, the Maelstrom Zone was still not considered totally pacified, and hundreds of small skirmishes broke out around the region. With only the presence of the Sons of Medusa and the Minotaurs keeping Loyalist supply lines open, and garrison duties left to thinly spread Imperial Guard and Inquisitorial forces. In addition, it looked like the Tyrant's forces were pulling back from Isin and Disabolus and concentrating their defence on Badab itself, while renegade bands of Astral Claws attempted escape into the Maelstrom. The Loyalists needed to push their advance, but with the news of the surrender of the Mantis Warriors, the departure of reinforcements from the Star Phantoms, and, due to diplomatic work by the Inquisition, imminent reinforcement from the Adeptus Mechanicus of Angstrom, they elected to strengthen the blockade around the Badab Sector, the linchpin of this being the Firehawks massive battle barge Rapturous Rex. In the meantime, the Carcharodons and the Sons of Medusa departed into the Dean Cellar Drift to hunt the Executioners, but as the Sons of Medusa clashed with the Executioners' ships, the Salamanders forced a parley and the Executioners agreed to stand down until the end of the war. In 913, the Star Phantoms chapter arrived at full strength along with a maniple of battle titans from Legio Crucius, and the final siege of Badab began. The Ring of Steel, the defences surrounding Badab, was breached by the genius of the Mechanicus of Angstrom, as they utilised the Rapturous Rex to tow and fire a burning stellar core into the primary control fortress of Sentinel Sigma. As Sons of Medusa and Exorcist boarding teams assaulted the burning station, the Minotaurs carried out strikes against Badab Secundus and Rygiel, decapitating their military commands. Finally, as Sons of Medusa forces gained control of the Ring of Steel, the outer Badab system became a sea of fire. The guns of Badab itself were still to be feared, and so the assault was split in three. The Star Phantoms, Sons of Medusa and Firehawks seized control of the High Guard, the old Astral Claws Fortress Monastery in orbit around Badab Primaris. And as orbital bombardment from this and the Loyalist fleet commenced, the Carcharodons deployed in full strength into the hives of Badab to sow terror, while the bulk of the Star Phantoms landed troops and titans and laid siege to the Palace of Thorns. The slow grind pushed on all day and night, until, on the second day, the Carcharodons dispatched strike teams to the hive's subsurface, and sabotaged and overloaded the ancient atomic reactors that powered the hives. As the surface of Badat Primaris started to crack and break, the Carcharodons pulled back to orbit, and as the guns fell silent, the Star Phantoms pushed forward into the palace. Captain Zrukal Androcles was mortally wounded in single combat with Lufthuron within the palace, but the tyrant of Badab and a small force of Astral Claws escaped as the planet collapsed and Loyalist and Secessionist forces alike attempted to flee to orbit. The Badab War was over. 
In the aftermath, the Astral Claws were declared traitors most foul, and the other secessionist chapters guilty of breaking with the ancient covenants of the Codex Astartes. They were sentenced to complete hundred-year-long crusades to atone. The Mantis warriors lost their dominion of the Endymion Cluster to the Firehawks, and the Star Phantoms were given control over the Badab Sector itself. And that's the Badab War, an example of how fractured the Imperium can become. What started as mismanagement turned into heresy, mostly through the actions of the Imperium itself. That was the story as it stands in the recent Imperial Armour books, but as I said, I have another video where I go through the history of Badab in the game, from the very first time it appeared in Rogue Trader. Have a look if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Thank you.